Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Megan! for drinking. <laughs> we're like, ah, oh, we're Irish. That's why we're drunk. Woo! <laughs> bra, party on Christmas. Woo! And then my family went to Ireland and we're like, oh no, we're not Irish. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, we were just drunk Americans <laughs> getting out of control. <laughs> my family got kicked out of bars in Ireland. <laughs> 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 That happened. You know how drunk you have to be for the Irish to kick you out? It's bad. We were out drinking and this old Irish man comes up to us and he's like, that's not how we leave bars in Dublin. <laughs> we were like, ah! Our fire! Sweet Caroline! <laughs> right, we were at somebody else's bachelorette party having the best time. Like, no, seriously, get out. <laughs> and we were like, sorry, Father. <laughs> God bless. Irish you know, like, Catholic family in Long Island. We say, we say God bless a lot. I feel like it's very, very big thing to say God bless. Like my mom, my aunt, they have the thick Long Island accents. You know, they say God bless, but it's usually after they've insulted you. <laughs> It's not after a good thing, you know? They'd be like, oh my God, have you seen Jeannie's hair? Oh, it's like she's got a cat in her head. God bless. <laughs> not even like a live cat, just like a dead cat, just sitting there. <laughs> Did I have you seen her son? In the name of the father? <laughs> drinking. I myself am a big white wine drinker because I feel like it fits my look. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, is there a PTA meeting later? I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll bring a box pino. It'll be great. When's the next soccer game? More of a cabernet, but still. Still. And then I show up and people are like, where's your kid? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't have any. I'm like, I am just here for the divorce dads. <laughs> like, if they're available, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a divorce dad, a guy that's like broken down, like beaten down by life, like just exhausted with good health care. <laughs> That's it, that's the payoff, you know? When you're younger, you're like, oh, maybe somebody looks good with their shirt off, you know? Maybe hair. <laughs> <laughs> you get older, you're just like Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> When you're younger, a friend with benefits is a friend you hook up with. You get older, you're like, no, seriously, what kind of benefits <laughs> do you have? Because I have wisdom teeth and I'm willing to negotiate. <laughs> I would love to go to a chiropractor. <laughs> amazing. My friend was embarrassed, told me about a guy she was dating. And I'm like, why? She's like, you're going to make fun of him. I was like, wow. I was like, what does he do? She's like, well, he's a garbage man. I'm like, that's a union job. That's a great job. I'm like, plus he's up early. He's a go-getter. <laughs> Are winning this battle. <laughs> I, was, 
I was single throughout the pandemic. Do we have any single people here? Okay, all right. That was, yeah, that was a real pandemic single. <laughs> it was barely a woo. <laughs> Like all throughout the pandemic, like I kept being like, I can't wait to get vaccinated and get back out there. Can't wait to get back out there, right? And now I'm back out there and I'm like, I'm ready to go back in. <laughs> it is not going well at all, you know? I don't know. My friends are like, do you have to online date? That's what you have to do. They're like, it's like the party that everybody's at. And if you don't go to the party, you're not gonna meet anybody. And I was like, well, is the party fun? <laughs> And they were like, no, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm like, that's really not the best advertisement for a party, you know? But I was like, whatever. So I signed up, and uh, here's the thing. When you online date, you learn a lot about yourself that you didn't want to know. <laughs> like, I see the people I'm being matched up with, and I'm like, this is my level? <laughs> to date out of my league for years. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like I thought I at least deserved teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciate you laughing at that joke because I did that joke uh, in Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> each other. It was very romantic. Yeah, and then I did that during a pandemic, and it was not romantic. It was terrifying. <laughs> I'm just wandering through Prospect Park with this complete stranger. Like, he was a lot taller than me, and we both had masks on, so nobody could hear each other. <laughs> right. Like, the sun started setting, which if you're with someone you know, romantic, with a stranger, you're like, I don't know if this is safe. <laughs> I'm not sure where the exits are. I met you on an app, I don't know your last name. <laughs> or I have your contact number. This is not good, right? But no, I did. I went on the park date and uh, we walked around for a while and finally we just found a park bench and we unmasked and we sat on opposite ends of a park bench. <laughs> we did, and we just talked for an hour. There was no chemistry, it felt like a podcast. <laughs> Like, well, I learned a lot about scuba diving, but we never have to do this again. <laughs> like, I like your posts on social media. I'll tell friends about you. But we're, done. <laughs> we're done here, right? So I froze my dating apps. I froze the apps. It's the thing you can do. You can freeze them, so you're on it, but you, you freeze it, right? But here's the thing. The apps don't like that. Like, they want you on those apps all the time, right? So what they start doing is they start sending you emails with your most compatible, right? <laughs> but they only give you a name because they want you to go to the website, right? So we get an email from them and they're like, Megan, we found your most compatible, Matthew. <laughs> and I was like, Matthew? Not like Matt? <laughs> you know, like I feel like Matt plays lacrosse, like he's gonna break my heart, I'm already in. <laughs> I feel like Matthew carries an EpiPen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is about Matthew, but I'm like, Matthew 
sounds like he's way too young for me. <laughs> like, it's not gonna work out, you know? But I was like, this is my ideal match. It's a pandemic, right? So I go to Matthew's profile. Now, I turned 40 during the pandemic. Hold for applause. And... <laughs> ago and I feel like yeah the mall like Kohl's my mom loves Kohl's she's like always going to Kohl's right she'll call me she's like oh you're putting Kohl's <laughs> people love Kohl's they're like oh it's great you got that cash <laughs> they do right well, I feel like my mom's retirement fund is just gonna be Kohl's cash <laughs> These coupons are expired. She's like, no, they'll honor it. They'll honor it. They know me. They know me. Dude, my mom would come and she's like, I'm going to Kohl's. You need anything? I'm like, you don't need anything. Why are you going? She goes, well, you can never have too many pillows. I'm like, yes, you can. There's a limit on pillows. Yeah. So we go to the mall recently, we go to the mall uh, a couple months ago, and we get there, and it's like so early, it's like the mall is not open. It's like 9.45 in the morning, right? So we try to get into Macy's, it's locked, right? I'm like, mom, the mall is not open. And she goes, hold on a second, I know another way. <laughs> I was like, what is this, like a Nancy Drew mystery novel? <laughs> Jerry in the case of the coupons, you know? <laughs> like, we're on the hunt. I should tell you, oh, so a lot of you guys are from Long Island. I'll paint the picture. Uh, it's the Sunrise Mall, in case you're wondering. Yes, yes, you know it. The Sunrise Mall. I bring that up because whenever I tell people I went to the Sunrise Mall, like the first thing they say is like, oh, is that place still open? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like it's fair to say the sun has set on the Sunrise Mall. <laughs> not doing great, right? But so, so we, sure enough, we go to this other entrance of the mall, and it's open, and there's people in there. And I'm like, what is happening here? And mom's like, oh, Megan, these are people who come to walk the mall. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, they're mall walkers. I was like, what? I've like never heard of a mall walker. She's like, you've never heard of a mall walker? I was like, no, I've never heard of the saddest gym in America. <laughs> for like a day of physical fitness. <laughs> and they're like, you know what really gets me going? The smell of yesterday's Sabaro and fluorescent lighting. <laughs> Let's do this, right? Like if you got on a treadmill and it was like the floor of the mall, you'd be like, somebody needs to clean this. <laughs> it's sticky, it's sticky. Right, like I don't understand, like I, have people here walked the mall? Do we have mall walkers here? Nice try. Nobody wants to admit it. Nobody wants to admit it. Right up my aunt and uncle, you walked the mall? It took a comedy show for me to learn this? Oh my god. Which mall? It's 
says to me, my mom's, I, I didn't do it. She goes, oh, I've walked the mall before, but I didn't like it. It was very competitive. <laughs> Margaritaville just pulled up. <laughs> and it looks like everybody got there early to get tickets to Buffett, and they're like, all right. But first, let me get my steps in. I'll do it. I'll do it. I was, I was so blown away by this. I was, I, my mind was just blown, blown by all of this. And then, it's like, so we finally go into this store, right? And then I realized there's a gym at the mall. <laughs> and it's open. And I'm like, well, they must have like amazing rates because it's a free indoor track. <laughs> Down below, sponsored by Hot Topic. <laughs> Too much. Too much. Hey, Kathleen, the best laugh. <laughs> And we're like, oh my, she's kissing the Blarney Stone. And she's like, <laughs> My Uncle Ray's like, hold on to the bar, Kathleen, just like you did last night. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I smile a lot. You guys probably noticed that. I smile a lot. I do. People are like, are you this happy all the time? I'm like, I'm not even this happy right now. <laughs> like, this is so much anxiety. <laughs> it just comes out this way. <laughs> I'm like, the more uncomfortable I get, the bigger the smile. It's a problem at funerals. <laughs> I'm like, hi, great to see everyone. They're like, no, it's not. <laughs> They always put me on the door. <laughs> the truth is, my grandmother's funeral, I welcomed people into the wrong wake. <laughs> and they stayed, because I was so friendly. <laughs> they signed the book. They signed the book. And then, of course, Uncle Ray knew them. He's like, I know these guys. <laughs> Like learned about their anxiety during this pandemic. I feel like we all, we all, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it out, get it out. I know, plot it out, whatever we can do, right? Right, there's so many different ways to deal with anxiety. Like I, I work out a lot, like running's great for anxiety, but I do feel like there's a limit to it, right? Like, you know, like I, it's like you run, that's great, but it, it is a little too much. Like a friend of mine does those ultra marathons, right? Like the 40 mile races. And like the first one he did, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. This is amazing. But then he just kept doing them. <laughs> and by like the fifth one, he like posted a photo on Facebook and it all caps underneath. I was like, what are you running from? <laughs> Just talk to somebody, Ryan. Just talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah, but anxi anxiety, it's so nice to know you're anxious. This is like my favorite part of anxiety, when you're anxious and you, t and like you hope nobody notices. You're like, oh God, you know, like you don't want anyone to notice. You're like, I hope no one notices. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I go to my same coffee shop every morning, right? <laughs> every morning I go in, I talk to the baristas, we have a whole conversation, right? And I go in there one day and I was all dressed up. Right? And I walk in and they're like, oh my gosh, you look so nice. And I was like, oh, thank you. And they're like, oh yeah, usually you come in here after you've worked out. I was like, no. <laughs> it's like, I have never come in here after I've worked out. <laughs> thank you so much for letting me know what it looks like when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> you know, I was just sweating it out in a treadmill for 45 minutes. I'm like, no, no, it was just anxiety, got up, got some coffee, and said, let's do this. <laughs> I do work out a lot, but I don't do CrossFit. Do we have any CrossFit people here? One person, yes, Danny's here. Yes, I love it. Only two, and nobody else, they can't be out. They can't be out, it's a Sunday. I know, you gotta get ready. I know, you, that's why, I know. You're trying to recruit more people, and they're like, we gotta protein it up. We can't. <laughs> 
I'm all for CrossFit because it gets people into working out. But like, it's a little cultish, right? Like, you got something called the gym. You call it the box. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go hit the box hard. You're like, that's very sexual. <laughs> all the CrossFit terms. It's so much, right? And I'm all for it. Again, like, it gets people into working out. But like, there is like a limit to it. Like, a friend of mine was very into CrossFit, and she told me she recently went to a protein powder party. Right? And I was like, excuse me? And she's like, a protein powder party. Like, I heard that, all I picture is like a cocaine party from the 70s. <laughs> but instead of mounds and mounds of cocaine, it's just mounds and mounds of protein powder. But like, all the same people are there. <laughs> it's just some guy, like, jacked up, wearing a wife beater, just sweating. Who's like, yo, 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 yo! Have you tried the chocolate peanut butter? Have you tried the chocolate peanut butter? It's amazing, it's amazing. A little bit of kale, a little bit of coconut, it's shredded. It's Shredded on your banana, put it in a blender. Ah! <laughs> and then he just gets a nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do cocaine, by the way. I have to clear that up. <laughs> A lot of energy, a lot of energy. Uh, I can't handle drugs at all. I can't handle it. Like I'm too off. Like I can barely handle like a probiotic vitamin. <laughs> I took it the other day. People were like, what's the matter with you? I was like, I don't know. But there's billions of microorganisms on the loose. <laughs> I'm on the loose. I was like, look out! I'm pretty bloated. <laughs> I was like not expecting about turning 40, you know? <laughs> Cyber Monday email deal from Quest Diagnostics, and I did not delete it. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 30% off blood work? Let's do this. <laughs> I got a physical coming up. This is great. I do weird things in 40 I wasn't expecting, like I shimmy a lot. I just started doing it mid joke. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> shimmy. Like, I, like unexpectedly, like alone, like in a bar. Like, like, I bought, like, new sponges the other day, like, like a three-pack of sponges. So, like, just clean the dishes. Like, nothing wild. And I opened the pack, and I started using the new sponge. And out loud to no one, I was like, ooh, I love a new sponge. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what's happening, you know? It's like my mom and my aunt used to get into a swimming pool. They'd be like, woo! Like, nothing's hurting today? <laughs> Woo! Make it out! <laughs> no, I, I, I do like getting older. Uh, I, li I, like, I like being able to sort of like, you know, see how the different generations interact with each other. Having a little perspective, I think, is fun. You know, like when you're no longer the younger generation, I like that. I like being like sort of the generation above. And I feel like I could really see how old people were based on like how well they can wait in line for COVID testing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, like the first big COVID test, like Thanksgiving 2020, like the COVID, it was like the first big holiday that we like had testing, right? So like the COVID lines went on for hours. And like you could tell everybody 35 and up was like ready to wait in that line, <laughs> right? It's like people brought snacks, they brought layers of clothes. I I showed up, somebody had like, the first three spots were just taken up by empty folding chairs. <laughs> like somebody showed up and marked their places. I was like, I was like, are we getting COVID tested or are we going to see Springsteen? What's going on here? <laughs> but it looked like the Ticketmaster line from the 90s. I was like, all right. <laughs> right, but we were like,
like ready for it. We're like, we are ready to wait in this line. And then I saw like millennials, they were all over the place. Like they brought stuff to do, some were knitting, um, <laughs> working on their Etsy shop, whatever. But like younger than that, like Gen Z didn't know what to do because they never had to wait for anything. Like Gen Z, like they're hungry, they press a button, food shows up. <laughs> like they want to go somewhere, there's an app for that. Boom, there's a car, it takes them there. Right, the girl that was online behind me didn't even bring her license. She was like, I have to bring something? <laughs> She's like, why? She's like, my phone knows my face. Like, <laughs> why would we do this, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, kids these days, they do not know how to wait. <laughs> We know how to stand and wait and wait and wait. We don't even know what we're waiting for, but we will wait it out. <laughs> right? And then I went back at Christmas, and there was a QR code on the door. And I was like, oh, they're better than us. <laughs> I was like, those kids waited online, and they were like, we don't have to do this. <laughs> we have the technology to skip this stuff. QR code, you scanned it, you went home, it alerted you when your number was up. Yeah. I know. Some people in this room got very sad at that. <laughs> Other people are like, what is a QR code? <laughs> amazing, though. It's amazing. No, but I, do, I do love that you guys are all here, because a, a lot of my friends have kids. A lot of my friends have kids. And I know, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out. They're like, when's your show? Sunday, 4.30? That's a little late. <laughs> That's a little late. That's not very convenient. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know what's inconvenient for me? Your wedding. <laughs> There's some bitter people here. Your wedding. I love weddings. Once you get there, you're like, great time, open bar, good time, right? But, <laughs> But I would do a wedding before the pandemic, no open bar. Yeah, but nobody tells you till you get there. Right, so you show up and they're like, oh, by the way, you have to pay for these drinks. You're like, oh, by the way, I need my envelope back. <laughs> like, I'm taking 50 bucks out and causing a scene. This is on you. I think you're saving money, we're getting crazy. <laughs> I think, I think now, now is an amazing time to be a parent. It's an amazing time to be a parent. It's been a very long pandemic for parents. It's been, <laughs> I love it. Parents up here are like, oh, I don't know if it is. <laughs> I love that. You're like, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> this is why I think it's amazing. To I think just because of social media, right? I look at my friends' news feeds, and it's like Facebook, Instagram, and it's like a year of blessing photo montage, <laughs> matching outfits. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so beautiful. I'm like, maybe I should have a kid. And then I hang out with them in person, and I'm like, this is not the same family <laughs> that I saw advertised online. <laughs> right, like, based on these photos I see, I think I'm gonna show up and there's gonna be like a choreographed dance number waiting for me. <laughs> like, welcome, Matty Megan, ta la, ta la, we're so happy for you. No, you show up and it's like the inmates have taken over the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> like toys everywhere, food on the wall, crane all over their college diploma. Nobody's wearing pants. <laughs> They're like, I went to my friend's house and her son's just wearing underwear with a sock hanging out of it. <laughs> and he's like, I'm a cat. <laughs> I was like, well, you definitely look like a predator. <laughs> I was like, please put some pants on. There's company. I'm the company. I'm always waiting for those two twins from The Shining to show up. Be like, come play with us forever and ever and ever. Right? I used to think The Shining was a horror movie, but now I think it was just written by a really tired dad. He's exhausted. He's like, get the minivan, get the axe. I don't know anymore. By the way, those of you who haven't seen The Shining, it's a family film. <laughs> right? It's perfect for the pandemic. Perfect. You know, your kids aren't paying attention. You throw in The Shining. You're like, this is what could happen if I have to watch Frozen one more time. <laughs> I will not let it go. I will not let it go. <laughs> Too much. And I live 
in Brooklyn, so there's like moms everywhere. Moms pushing strollers, you know? And if you're a mom and you're pushing a stroller, I am jealous. Because you can do whatever you want. You can talk to yourself out loud in public, nobody cares. <laughs> They're like, it's fine, she's just talking to the kid. I'm like, that kid is not old enough to understand. Like, that's just a lady running her day, <laughs> you know? Like, I saw a woman the other day, and she's pushing a stroller, and she's like, well, later on, we're gonna go to the grocery store, and that's gonna be fun, that's gonna be fun, and then maybe later, Daddy will be home. Well, I know he's home, but he's working for a moment. We can't disturb him. Maybe I wanna take a Zoom yoga class with my friends. Maybe I wanna hug my parents in person. Maybe it's on a little bit of time for myself, but that's okay, because we're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> And you look down and there's no baby in the stroller. <laughs> like, that is good therapy. like not the same. Ladies night you come over it's like come over, we'll drink wine, we'll order sushi, it'll be sad. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody says that but then you show up and you're like oh it's just gonna be us. <laughs> oh that's so fun. Yeah that's so fun. Oh my gosh you're selling jewelry now? <laughs> out of control. <laughs> Even worse, I have friends making their own jewelry. Way worse. Way worse. Because my one friend is like, this next piece, I made this. I made this myself. I'm like, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> like, it looks like a bunch of paper clips looped together. I'm like, you're selling this? You know? And I know that's mean. I know that's judgmental. I feel like women, we can be very judgmental people. I don't even think we mean to be. I just think there's something in estrogen that we just file information away. And we file information away. And then we find out somebody's been talking about us beyond our back and it just comes spewing out of nowhere. It's like, what'd she say? Who? Kathy? I don't think I know Kathy. And then it's like, click, and it's like, oh, you mean fat Kathy with the screwed up eyebrows and the weird lips? That Kathy? What'd she say, that booze bag? I'll rip her eyes out. Like, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Kathy, it was actually Deb. I'm like, I know, because Kathy's a sweetheart. <laughs> she never would have said that. We're getting Maddie Petty's next week. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> so I was say, my, my aunt's name is Kathleen. And uh, after the first time she heard that joke, she came up to me in a parking lot after a show. And she goes, hey, Meg, who's fat Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> you got one minute to sum this up. She loves it. She loves it. One of her favorite movies is The Vow. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll sum it up very quickly. It's Rachel McAdams, Channing Tatum, 
They're a husband and wife couple, right? They get in a horrible car accident, and then she wakes up in the hospital, and she's like, doctor? And he's like, no, I'm your husband. And she's like, what? Husband? I don't remember having a husband. And then the whole movie's about them falling back in love, and it's amazing, and they renew their vows. I'm like, I'm sorry if I woke up in a hospital bed, and Channing Tatum was like, I'm your husband. <laughs> I'd be like, sold. <laughs> I will leave this hospital with you immediately. <laughs> Do people know we're together? Do they know we're together? <laughs> like, what's up, Magic Mike? Facebook. Uh, uh, like, I don't know who I am, but I must be pretty awesome because you are really good cool looking. <laughs> and then somebody told me that movie's actually based on a real couple. I'm like, well, I'd like to see what they look like. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. Maybe she woke up and he's like, I'm your husband. And she's like, yeah, I don't remember you. <laughs> Get to earn my love one day at a time. <laughs> Start by doing the dishes. <laughs> Take out the recycling. That's on a Tuesday. It's weird. I remember that. Just <laughs> not <laughs> people here. A lot of people here, man. <laughs> then in order that the romantic jokes, you're like, yes. <laughs> yes. My parents have married, I was going to say 45. Is it 46? 45? It'll be 45 in November. It'll be 45 in November. <laughs> It's like my sister had a baby during the pandemic, and thank God, because we needed new people in this family. <laughs> 45 years of marriage, like we had run out of conversation as a family. We're like, we need new people to talk to. Let's do this, you know? We're very close, very close family. You know, we still have the family cell phone plan. Uh, that's right. You heard me earlier. I turned 40 during the pandemic. We're still on the family cell phone plan. My sister got married three years ago, and we just added her husband to our family cell phone plan. My parents aren't happy about it, but they don't know their password. <laughs> month, my dad's like, this bill's getting really expensive. <laughs> I'm like, well, you always wanted a son. <laughs> People should know, my brother-in-law does have his own plan. We have to say that because it's being recorded. Uh, <laughs> but my sister's not on it. She's still on it. <laughs> Password. What's the password, Mom? <laughs> good job, good job. You didn't fall for it. That was good. Or you don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh my God. No, we are very close, though. Uh, we did an escape room together as a family before the pandemic, right? We didn't know that what was coming. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Even, I'd never done an escape. I didn't even know what it was. My cousin's like, "Oh, it's so great." She goes, "We all got locked in a room together, and we have to find our way out." I was like, oh, you mean like Christmas? <laughs> I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, what is happening? She's like, no, it's so great. There's like a theme. It's like $30 a person. I was like, $30 a person. I'm like, let's just lock ourselves in the basement. Let's bring a bottle of Jameson. If we make it out as a family, we won. <laughs> like, end of story. I'm like, even better, let's take those $30. Let's make this a gamble. Let's put it in the middle. If nobody brings up politics, you get your money back. <laughs> it work. Somebody would say something. Be like, what? <laughs> no, we are very close. We all sang in the church choir together. We did. We sang in the church choir together. We did. And people were like, oh my gosh, your whole family can sing? No. <laughs> None of us can sing, but it's church. They don't reject you. <laughs> show up to the family mess, you're like, we're here ready to go. They're like, oh, again, again. <laughs> we're up there singing off key. I played the finger cymbals. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're so into it. So, 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 we would like, be singing the whole
whole church would turn around and look at us and we're like, it's because we're so good. It's Right off one week, or the bass drum, off key tambourines. I was like, this must be a remix of the Holy Holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We, but this is how they got rid of us. They had to get rid of us. They, did. they go, we're moving to the altar. And then I was the only one that stayed because I was like, well, I'm staying because I'm very talented. <laughs> I went to the rehearsals, I was like, I should serve the church. Let me sing. Let me sing. They were like, get away from the mic. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Memory. Memory. <laughs> I love it. My family's great, but they are losing it. <laughs> My mom sends me emails and then she calls me to see if I got them. <laughs> I'm like, congratulations, you defeated the entire purpose <laughs> of the whole system. I'm like, what's your what you email? Just tell me, just tell me. What is it, right? My dad has just started wearing a neck brace. He might be like, oh, is he injured? Nope, he's just 75 years old and he's sick of holding his head up. <laughs> True story, he called the VA and he was like, I need a neck brace, and they gave it to him, no questions asked. <laughs> like, here you go, thank you for your service. <laughs> it's your neck brace. It's the only thing I ever got from the VA. <laughs> the show. I, I kind of get something in here. I love it. I love it. This is my family after a show. I'm like, was I great? They're like, were we good? <laughs> you were. You nailed it. You nailed it. Though, a little bit, a little bit. That's got the neck brace. He mows the lawn, 90 degree heat, doesn't matter what the weather. Full sweatsuit on, put off like he's gonna get a call from the Olympic wrestling team. And they're like, Can you make weight? Can you make weight? And he's like, I can. I can. I'm training for this moment. He's always wearing the same sweatshirt. It just says, I hear you, but I choose to ignore you. We're like, Dick, you need a Gatorade? Water? Anything? Keeps going. Keeps going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's buying minivans because he claims they remind him of helicopters from Vietnam because the doors open on both sides. <laughs> what is happening here, you know? And also I was like, my dad's losing it, my dad's losing it, right? And then I've had a couple opportunities to go overseas and perform for the troops, which has been awesome. We had it on there. <laughs> Me and Robin did a tour together. I just did a tour in December. We did Honduras and Greenland, same suitcase. And <laughs> 80 degrees, negative 20. We're like, all right. <laughs> Let's do this. It was, it was wild. And the military, they are, they are incredible. But the first military uh, tour I did was the one I, I did with Robin. And uh, the first base that we got to was Kosovo. And we get to Kosovo, and like, as a surprise, we're going to take you to your first show in a Black Hawk helicopter. Right? And like, I had never been in any kind of helicopter before. Like, I was so nervous, I couldn't even figure out how to do my seatbelt, so Marine had to do it for me, so it was a win win. <laughs> I was like, a little tighter, a little tighter. <laughs> right? So we go, we do the show, and then after the show, they're like, all right, we're going to take you to an airfield, and we're going to show you how this helicopter works, right? So they're like, they're going to take you, we're going to do a couple laps, right? They're like, first lap. We're gonna take it easy, you know, just, just go around, do a circle, whatever, you know what, okay. It's like second loop, you know, we're gonna move around a little, side to side, you know, he's like, third loop, we're getting crazy. He's like, we're flipping around, we're moving, we're doing some tricks, you know, we're really showing you this helicopter gonna work, right? So we're like, great, we got this, this is amazing, right? So first loop, already too much. <laughs> right, but nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> we're like, oh, this is fun, 
fun, right? Second loop, we're like nauseous. We're like, okay, okay. Third loop, we like, we all start freaking out. We're freaking out. We're like, stop the helicopter! Stop the helicopter! And then we realize, like, the pilot can't hear us. And I was like, oh my gosh, my dad was right. I was like, all the passengers are freaking out, and the pilot is just comfortably going to his destination. I hear you, but I choose to ignore you. <laughs> a lot during the pandemic. At first we didn't see each other at all, you know, and then we were hanging out a lot. And it's great, because I watch TV with them. And it's, it's, it's fun, they watch TV together every night, you know, and they love all the cop shows. They love the cop shows, like Law and Order, CSI, we just got into Bosch, that was their big show. Right, we didn't think, but it's not relaxing, because it's like, they love the law enforcement shows, but my dad is retired law enforcement, so it's not relaxing at all. My mom is trying to watch the television show, and my dad yells out all the inaccuracies in police procedure. <laughs> As if he's working the case, right? <laughs> so he'll be sitting there like watching Blue Bloods, you know, and it's like the detective show up to the crime scene, you're like, what's going on here? What happened? What's the situation? My dad's like, no, no, students are never the first on the scene. <laughs> Uniform police are the first on the scene. Call it in, call it in. <laughs> You know it's also not the first on the scene? Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> like, if you see a crime being committed and one of the current members of the New Kids on the Block shows up, <laughs> you better be ready to hang tough. <laughs> that was for like a very specific group of people in the room. <laughs> Those are my Xennials, those are my Xennials. If you guys, so I've been other demos, uh, we're Xennials. If you were born between like 1978 and 1983. Yeah. Yes, we are Xennials. Yes. Yes. Apparently we have the hope of millennials, but the cynicism of Generation X. <laughs> yes, especially when it comes to technology. And I was like, oh, that is right on. Cause I'm like, I ran two New York City marathons with a Sony yellow Walkman. <laughs> And people were like, how'd you like running with that VCR? <laughs> I was like, it was reliable. <laughs> you know, watching TV with the parents, it, it, it is great, but the only time it gets awkward are like when those commercials come on for like Viagra. <laughs> or like Cialis, you know? I'm like 45 years together, I don't wanna know. <laughs> like, whatever, right? And those Cialis commercials are the worst, because like the women are never pissed. They're never pissed. They're always so thrilled. They're like, oh, for daily use. Every day. <laughs> You're gonna need an ice pack. <laughs> right, like I wanna see a realistic version of one of those commercials, you know? It's like a real couple, like they've been married for like 45 years. <laughs> She's like gardening, but she's not in like a cute sundress. She's wearing like old sweatpants. <laughs> you know, she's like getting in there for a crop. You know, she's like really getting in there. She's like, oh, these tomatoes look great, right? And then her husband comes home and she's like, oh, you got a pill. You got a pill. Oh, I'm so happy there was something for you to take because that was the problem. <laughs> okay. Who gave this to you? What doctor? What doctor? <laughs> for a colonoscopy, you came up with this bullshit. <laughs> no, no, don't ask your doctor for healthy enough for sex, ask your wife. <laughs> wife. <laughs> for daily use, we've been daily since 1975. <laughs> we were finally friends, we were finally friends. <laughs> That's why I think they should totally make a pill for women. You know, like give it like a cute name, like Vagimax. <laughs> he's so great, right? The commercial just the husband comes home and he's like, honey, where are you? And she's like, I'm on the dryer. <laughs> and it's like, you guys think we're getting turned on by the vibrations. No, it's because we're multitasking. <laughs> Do it once, get me that salad spinner. I didn't really think about doing that joke knowing my dad was gonna be sitting right here. 
Starbucks. It was like very early, like 7 a.m. Had not my coffee, like groggy, tired, right? I opened the door to Starbucks, and Huey Lewis and the news, the power of love was playing, right? Yes! Right? So I opened the door to Starbucks, and I hear, dun, dun, dun. That's the power. That's the power of love. And I was like, yes. Let's start this day, right? So I go to the guy at the counter, and I go, Huey Lewis and the news. I did this. Like, I was so proud. I was Huey Lewis. And he looks at me and he goes, you were in the news? <laughs> I, was like, what? I was like, no, I was like, that song. I was like, Huey Lewis. I'm like, the skateboard scene, Back to the Future. I was like, Huey Lewis in the news. And like, I could tell like, I had no idea what I was talking about. Like, complete blank expression on his face. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, just get me my coffee, Matthew. <laughs> 